So today I am working on making some homemade no yeast added grape wine. I did this last year and I actually didn't really remember to film it and share it with you guys. So I figured I should do that this year. First thing I'm going to say is if you're doing this, a ceramic or glass bowl is preferable to stainless steel, but this is what I have in a big bowl size, so I just do it. Um, also, for me, this is more of like an adult science experiment. I'm just doing this based off of advice from a friend that has done this several times, and then from a few websites that I've looked at that I will try to remember to link, but basically... I have my big bowl of grapes. These are not washed. These are from my mom's little grape vineyard she has going on. I, so I know they haven't been sprayed with anything. Any ones that were split or squishy or really dirty, this is in my discard bowl that will go to the chickens. And there's some little stems in here, the skins and the seeds, and that is fine. What I'm going to do is crush these as much as I can and then add in a little bit of honey and a little bit of sugar. I just did honey last year and I thought the final product tasted okay. Dan wanted it to be a little bit sweeter so I think I'm gonna go with honey and sugar this year and I will just see how it goes. But basically we're gonna crush all this, add the honey and sugar, put it in some glass jars and then let the fermentation process go and then at the end of that strain, bottle, and drink as you want. I only made a few bottles last year. We drank one we tried right away, and it was okay. The second bottle we let age for probably about six months, and I will say I thought that one tasted a lot better than the one we had opened and used within like a week or two of it being done. Um, I don't know if that was just because it was allowed to age, or maybe they just happened to be from different bottles, and you know, it is what it is. Okay, I have a helper for the crushing part. <laughs> it's sticky. Yeah. Why is the green? Well, that's the insides of the grapes coming out. No, the grapes are green. Oh, there might be a few green ones. That's okay. <laughs> so, obviously, if you are adding honey, you want raw honey for all the yeasts and goodness that is in that. And I'm really not measuring this. I'm just gonna squirt a bunch in, add some sugar, stir it around, and taste test. Depending on the sweetness of your grapes will kind of depend on how much you want to add. And remember, a lot of those sugars are going to get eaten by the yeast in the process. So even if it's <laughs> sweet now, it may not be later. So it really is, if you're doing it like I'm doing it, it's a science experiment. Unless you find someone that has more of a recipe. Hi, Flash. <laughs> to use. Okay, so I got it in all of my containers. I can't find my little glass weights to put in here. And remember, I did some with and without last year, and it all turned out fine. So I'm just going to say to heck with it. Again, this is a science experiment, so we are just going to go with it and see how it happens. I also, my little, like, fermenting plastic lids are too big those are for wide mouth jars so what I did last year <laughs> because I also did the same thing is I just put a paper towel over the top and screwed the lid on I did go ahead and wipe down the edges with some vinegar to make sure they're nice and clean the wind blew the door open okay thank you Aspen but now they pretty much just go into a dark cool area until they are done fermenting. It is day two for the grapes. I have actually already stirred them. They had all swollen up to the top and actually were overflowing a little bit, which I kind of remembered from last time and left some head space, but I did not leave enough clearly because it happened again, but that's okay. But you just want to take, you know, a clean knife or some sort of utensil and just kind of stir everything around at least once a day. And you just do that the whole time it's fermenting. Okay, I'm showing you this on top of my pellet stove because the kitchen table is full of pumpkins and tomatoes and peppers right now. And this is like the only space I have. This one is done fermenting. This one is not. These are both grape, both started the same day. Just wanted to show you what the difference is. One 
obviously as soon as you open it you can see it just kind of looked different these ones are sunk a little bit more it just doesn't seem like there's a lot going on they both smell great this one has just it's done little yeasties are done this one see all the bubbles we are still very much alive there's one more smaller jar that's ready to go so I'm going to strain the two smaller well this one and the smaller one and I guess I'll have a little bit of wine from that I might just find a jar like this to put it in I bought cute wine bottles but I'm not gonna have enough <laughs> to fill a wine bottle right now but that's okay I will use up the ones that are ready to go and the rest will just go back into my little fermenting cabinet and this is fairly straightforward I have a big bowl I have my cheesecloth I've sunk it down a little bit so we don't get any overflow we're just going to dump everything out if it wants to come out and then squeeze as much of the liquid as humanly possible out and then the liquid that is in here is your drinkable wine you can age it for a while which will help the taste there will end up being some sediment in it just because of this isn't no fancy wine clearly uh, but you know that doesn't affect the taste or the quality at all it's just a visual thing or you can be like me and probably drink this later i'm excited to give it a try because i have a freezer full of grapes and i need to get working on them so i need to see if this honey and sugar added if we like it and then i need to get making more Okay, I decided to heck with it that I was going to put it in a bottle because we're probably going to drink this anyways. So this is what it looks like. It will, trust me, it, it will settle because I've done this before and it'll be kind of a lighter color with a bunch of sediment, sediment at the bottom. But it's a really pretty color right now. I'll give it a little taste just for you guys. All right, so those little bottles have been done for a while, and as I said, I had a bunch of grapes in the freezer to get rid of. So I grabbed one of my five-gallon buckets that I use for sap when we are collecting sap to make maple syrup, and I filled it probably about a third of the way with grapes and crushed them again. I do not add any water, and like I said, I add sugar and honey just because I do like the added sweetness, but you do not have to add sugar and honey the grapes have their own you know sugars in them and they will ferment naturally you're just going to have a lot lower alcohol content if you're not adding any sugar or any yeasts which i don't add any yeast i mean there's a little bit in the raw honey but i'm not adding like a particular wine yeast i will make sure to add the links to i think there's two websites that i kind of perused a little bit when I was making this. Um, they show you, you know, there's some fancy tools that you can use to age the wine properly once it's done with the fermentation stage and all this other stuff. And I am just not <laughs> that particular about it that I care to do any of that. This is like the cheap backyard homesteaders wine. I would say it's definitely worth trying it this way if you just want to do something fun if you take your wine a little more seriously or are doing a big a big batch uh i would look at these websites and even if you're not adding the yeasts or the little preservative tablets or using their little aging tool i can't say it it starts with a c um you know it's it's good to know the right way to do it <laughs> for fancy stuff and then you can just kind of make it up as you go it's fermentation it's not it's not really anything difficult it's going to be wine or vinegar in the end 